A guten Erev Shabbos. A fellow who drove a cement truck was very particular, you might say particularly difficult, that the parking space in front of his apartment building that he decided was his was always open for him to park his truck in at the end of a long day. He had a reputation for berating anyone who parked in his spot and it did not make him many friends. One afternoon he came home from work and found a car parked in his spot, so he decided to teach that person a lesson. He backed up his cement truck and dumped a coating of fresh cement on that pristine car sitting in his spot. He parked in another spot and headed inside. He was more than a bit surprised when his dark apartment lit up with shouts of surprise and balloons and decorations and his whole family. In honor of his birthday, his sons had got together and bought him a new car and parked it in his spot. Sometimes when we're stuck in a bureaucratic cul-de-sac or an unforeseen financial situation or a health challenge or even just miserable traffic on the highway, it can seem like things are simply out of our control. Our independent agency has been taken away from us. We're powerless cogs in the machine. Okay, if that's overstating things a little bit, it certainly feels sometimes like we are not as free as we'd like to be. In our lifetimes, we've seen the notion of freedom extend to more lands and more peoples the world over. But every once in a while, we might be forgiven if the question arises in our minds, are we truly free and what does that even mean? Listen to the beginning of our Parsha, which we'll read this Shabbos. It says, See, I'm setting before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing is if you listen to the mitzvahs that God your God commands you this day. And the curse, if you don't listen to the mitzvahs of God your God and you stray from the path, etc., etc. What's happening here is the setting out of a choice for us to choose, each of us, our own path. And we always have, and we always do. Each day, each one of us chooses. You may be in a certain routine, certain habits may form, but that's because you chose to make them so. This choice that the Parsha is speaking about, between blessing and its opposite, between good and its opposite, between life and its opposite, is going to be articulated in greater depth over the next few parshas and then reiterated at the end of Nitzavim, four parshas from now, the Shabbos before Rosh Hashanah. Moshe will tell us again that we have a choice, and spoiler alert, he's going to tell us what the correct choice is that we should make, and another spoiler alert, what he's going to say is you should choose life. I still hope you come to the Shabbos between now and then, now that I told you how it ends. The question that's frequently asked is, do we really have free choice? Isn't it the case that God already knows what's going to happen? Isn't it all preordained? The short answer is, yes, we have free choice. Otherwise, there's no reward. There's no consequences. There's also no tshuva. So yes, we have a free choice. We are not robots. At least I think we're not robots. I'm pretty sure I'm not a robot because I keep checking the box on the web that says, I am not a robot. And yes, I do it robotically. Okay, I'm pretty sure we're not robots. In a uh, recent collection called Insights and Attitudes, Rev. Herschel Schachter uh, writes about free will, and he says, the opening section of Parshas Re'eh, our portion this week, formulates the principle of Bechira Chofshit. Bechira Chofshit, free choice. It's interesting to note, Rev. Schachter says, that Jeremiah, Yirmiyahu, who writes in chapter 9 that no one should be proud of his intelligence, his strength, or his wealth because these are all determined before we're born, according to a Gemara in Nida. And these don't, do not necessarily indicate the greatness of the individual. That itself is a fascinating point to ponder. Wait, isn't it true that the harder one works, the more money you earn? Isn't it true that if you study more, you'll become smarter? Well, yes. And the prophet still seems to be telling us that all that, too, is mina shamayim. It's each person's lot in life. Fascinating. So what we earn, what degrees we hold, how much weight we can lift, it's all in our destiny, it seems, from this. So why work hard? Evidently, hard work is part of the destiny. It seems that when we push ourselves to do more, or if we give ourselves a pass, that's an intrinsic part of who we are, too. 
So aren't we strengthening the question, really? Where does free choice come in? Rav Schachter writes that we can make decisions yesh me'ayin, something out of nothing, out of the blue. That's one way. We are B'Tselem Elohim, created in the divine image, in God's image. God created the whole world, yesh me'ayin, out of absolute nothing. We also are able to make decisions out of nothing and turn them into something. It's not too much to say that some people have a talent for turning something into nothing. It's a separate conversation. The term Bechira, choice in Hebrew, suggests that we're choosing from things that look equally good or equally bad, right? Elections are called Bechirot, you know. Uh, but Bechira is technically choosing among things where the choice is equally attractive among all the options. There's a separate term, Borer or Brera, meaning choosing in terms of picking out of a mix the things that you want. That's Borer. Bechira is you could have logically chosen any of them. They all make sense. They're all attractive. Then he suggests that Bechira Chofshit is a next level of freedom. He quotes Rabbi Soloveitchik to say that we can even choose things that were not on offer to take our lives or our day or our week in a different direction that did not even seem to present itself at the outset. We found it, identified it, and we pursued it. We made it happen. We've probably all made choices in our lives, and looking back, it may not have seemed likely or even plausible at the outset, but here we are. We've wound up where we are. There's a fascinating discussion in the Talmud in Tractate Kiddushin, which we haven't got to yet, but one day we will. It's the question of Gadol HaMetsuva Vaosa Mimisha Eno Metsuva Vaosa. What's greater? A person who's commanded to do something and fulfills it, or someone who's not commanded and also fulfills that task, whatever it is. You can surely see the advantage in someone who's not obligated, but nevertheless, they show up and they do what needs to be done. It's heroic, it's inspiring, it's courageous. And at the same time, the Gemara wants to show the positive side to someone who is commanded. And even though they're commanded, they still do it nonetheless. Sometimes there's a tendency to say, well, if you tell me I have to, it's not quite so fulfilling when you have to, when you're obligated. If you tell me at the Kiddush on Shabbos, which one you attach more value to. The solution that Rav Shachter comes up with to navigate this balance is positive on both sides. He says, let each person fulfill the mitzvahs of a Kaddish Baruch Hu, of Hashem, like this portion, this week's portion tells us, and let them do not just what has to be done, but, and I'm quoting his words here, let each person do their own thing. That's the expression he uses. Do their own thing in Hidur Mitzvah, Lifnim Mishur Asadin, going above and beyond the minimum requirements entering into the inner meaning of the mitzvahs. Some examples. Tzedakah, it's an obligation. Giving more than is required is your choice. I gave someone once uh, at a stoplight. You know, they, when you pull up to the stoplight, they ask you, begging for help. I gave them a bill. They started crying. You get more than you give. No question about it. Davening, prayer, tefillah, as good as it is, imagine with some learning beforehand, a little bit of uh, uh, meditation, reflection, some mindful focusing, thinking about God and us and what we're all doing here, specifically with prayer. The introductions to the Rosh Hashanah and the Yom Kippur Machzer are outstanding places to start with this. We're already working on them in Friday mornings uh, uh, at breakfast and the Friday afternoons before Mincha. You are most warmly invited to join us. And now we are about to enter into the month of Elul, which will begin next Thursday and Friday. Friday morning, we will sound the shofar after Shacharis as a wake-up call to prepare ourselves and do what needs to be done for Rosh Hashanah. Some excellent things to do are part of what we do, but also Hidur Mitzvah, going beyond the minimum, making it your own, renewing your membership if you haven't done so already. We're hopefully mailing out tickets, uh, sorry, community share certificates this week. Encourage other people to join. We're happy to have new faces in our shul, and hopefully we'll see more in the coming weeks. Tzedakah again. It's time to start thinking about the Yom Kippur appeal. That, plus membership, plus our golf fundraiser, are our main sources of operating funds for the shul during the year. Now, I spoke with a number of people, and all of them seem to be on the same page. Everyone suggested that other people should give. That's a good answer, although it's incomplete. It's not the whole story. You should know... The people who give, uh, the, you, you, the people, there are people who should give, you're right, 
they should give, and hopefully they will. And you should know that when we ask them, they say that you should give. And they're also right. Hopefully you will. So let's all band together and come up with new and not so new ways to build and to bond and to ensure our precious kahila. More Friday night dinners, more outings to museums and theater and speakers and interesting events in town, more occasions to meet during the days or even the evenings in person and enjoy each other's company and being together. It's important. We all need it. And it's what community is really about. At the end of our Amidah, each time we daven, we say, Barchenu avinu kulanu ke'echad. Bless us, our Father, all of us as one. Meaning at a deeper level that we're really fully ready for and deserving of brachas, of blessings, when we are one, ke'echad. Let's continue to live it in the final weeks of this year and resolve to help each other, strengthen those feelings in the year to come. Please, God, it should be for us and for all the Jewish people, one, a year of good health and happiness and joy and peace. Shabbat Shalom.